Back here on Yahoo, a little MMA talk as we, uh, again, discuss judging. And I thought I'd be able to come on here, Kevin Ioli, and say, listen, fans, this is the way it works. Stop overreacting. But there was, I think, one little glitch in the scoring in the Jardine Musasi fight. I wasn't shocked that it was a 28-28 because I thought there'd be some dummy judge who would overrate the, the takedowns in the opening round. And, you know, Musasi didn't get off with his striking. But one of the judges gave the second round... <sighs> To Musa or to uh, Jardine Keith and that, Jardine, yeah. and Keith Jardine, and that screwed everything up. Yeah, I, I, that was Abe Bellardo that scored the second round for Keith Jardine, and you know, frankly, Steve, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what he was looking at. Uh, in that round, uh, Keith had uh, two takedowns out of five takedown attempts. You know, um, and were, were they significant? He was outstruck in on forty to eight. I mean. You know, I'm just not sure exactly what he did that you know that Abe Bellardo thought he that uh, thought he won that round, but that's the problem in that fight. That you know the way that round was scored, and and I let's let's be honest. You know, I think uh, Lester Griffin uh, you know missed the round too. I think you know Lester Griffin missed the first round, and he actually ended up making it a two point round for Keith Jardine because there was a point taken away from Musasi in the first round for an illegal up kick. So when that happened, now you take a point off his score so Musasi uh, goes from on uh, Lester Griffin's scorecard losing it 10 to 9 to losing it 10 to 8 um, that makes a big difference yeah see I, I thought the first round was kind of a toss up round and you know slightly in favor of Musasi you could give Jardine credit for the four takedowns the problem with all the takedowns for the most part and he landed six of them is that in, in the end he, I think he he, on the ground, he landed like less than five shots. And to me, if you're a judge, you, your scoring on takedowns has to be all right. Maybe he gets a point for the takedown. But if the other fighter gets up immediately and you can't settle him down, that takedown really doesn't mean a whole lot. And then on top, of that, on top of that, if you don't land anything, then really the takedown did nothing. Yeah, Steve, I've said this many times when we discuss scoring, and I've talked about it with a lot of elite uh, people in MMA. MMA is an offensive sport, and a takedown in and of itself is not an offensive move. It's the beginning of an offensive move, but if you know, if you come in, you double leg me, take me down, and then just immediately pop back up, what have you done? Nothing, right? Now, you have to take me down and do something with that, land some blows, advance position, move for a submission, whatever, um, and, and I don't think Keith did that, and, he, and even, you know, the takedown that Keith had, I'm not trying to minimize what he had, but it was not like he went in there and was just blown with these, you know, great double legs or single legs. I mean, you know, as they were along the cage and he kind of dumped them a couple times. And, you know, I, I just thought Musasi uh, controlled that fight from beginning to end. Um, you know, I, I understand how the scoring worked and how it became a majority draw when when you find out that two of the judges, in fact, gave Keith Jardine one of the rounds. But, uh, you know, uh, it was tough. One question on the upkick. Is that an automatic point deduction or is that to the ref's discretion? It's to the rough discretion, but I think, you know, in, in that case, you know, it, it cut him a little bit. It, it's a hard, uh, you know, it's a hard uh, foul not to uh, take the point over because obviously the cut's going to have an impact on uh, Jardine's ability to fight the rest of the fight. So you're trying to help him out and say, OK, you know, we you know, you've taken a bad illegal blow here. We're not we're going to take a point away to because, you know, that blood in your eye is going to have some impact, you know, even if. We understand if the if the doctor would rule later that hey you know the cut, he can't continue because of that cut that you know it was from an illegal blow but ha having said that you know he's how many blows will he take with blood going in his eye and that's kind of that thing that you can't you know quantify so as a result you know I think the right call was made uh, by referee Mike Beltran to in fact. Uh, uh, take a point from Musasi for that. How about your take on the fight? Uh, I want to get to the performance on both sides, but the, the first story that's coming out now, uh, Scott Coker mentioning that there may be a Jardine Musasi too, which, I mean, I guess you have to finish it off, but boy, I, I have no interest in seeing that fight. Well, you know what? I mean, you know, I'm going to disagree with you, Steve, and I'll tell you why. Keith Jardine took the fight with what? You know, seven days notice, less than seven days notice, and he had no fight planned, you know, and, and Frank Shamrock, I think, said it on the broadcast. You know, there's there's being in shape and then there's being in fight shape and you know they're two dramatically different things and you know it was clear that Keith was not in shape and I think Keith you know has had a pretty good gas tank in his career it's never been an issue where you know you get to the second round and Keith Jardine is winded and that fight you know he he was winded at the end of the first round and I think that was just due to the fact that you know hey he was working but he wasn't preparing for a fight so you know I think it's only fair to Keith Jardine that he gets a rematch you know because 
it was, uh, you know, there's some controversy to the outcome. And because, you know, he took the fight and did them a favor on short notice to save, you know, otherwise I don't think Musasi fights if Keith Jardine doesn't do that. So with Musasi, we had uh, broken down the fight beforehand, and I thought Musasi would tear him up. Pretty much what happened, happened. I guess the only thing I'm disappointed with is that Keith Jardine is not some elite takedown artist, and Musasi just seems to go to the ground too easily. Now, give him credit, he got up quickly, but wh- where do you come out of this in terms of Gegard Musasi? You know, I'm, I still have my questions about him, you know, because I think that against the uh, top guys that, you know, that I think they're going to be able to hang with him in the striking game. And they seem to be have uh, more uh, well-rounded where they have other aspects of their game, you know, and, that, uh, and they're going to be better uh, wrestlers than uh, what Keith Jardine was. So, yeah, you know, I, I think there's some questions out there about Musasi right now that, you know, he's still got a lot to prove. And I think, you know what, if he can come on and if he can – do what he did in the third round to Keith Jardine for three rounds of the next fight when Keith Jardine has a training camp and's prepared, then I'll say, hey, he's ready to move, you know, move up a level. Yeah, I think my biggest thing with Gegard is he, again, we mentioned the takedown defense, um, and I've compared him in the past in terms of his emotions to Fedor, but I, I think he does have some Fedor-like flaws in the way he fights because he kind of just wants to walk forward and walk through everything like a like a, a, an android, you know, and just take kicks and go, it's not going to hurt me, and just keep going for the, the strikes. But the problem is when you're that upright, you're easy to take down, and you also are easy to hit. Right. I think, I think, you know, sometimes guys fall in love with their power, and as you move up in levels of competition, you know, when you're fighting a lower level competition, you know, they're going to go down from some of those blows that, that the better guys don't go down from. You know, the better guys not only uh, have better offense, but they take punches and they take kicks and whatnot better. And so I think, you know, that uh, they have better defense. I think that's what's happening. You know, Gegard, you know, kind of fell in love with his power against lower level guys. And now he's saying, I think his power is good enough to knock out elite guys, but he's got to put it together right. And he can't just, you know, kind of come in there and go through the motions with it. One final thing on the judging, because we're not going to kill a Bilardo here, although I think he blew it and, uh, and cost the victory for Musasi. Are we closer when we see fights like this? Because I, I don't think there's that many awful fights. I think most of the time it's an overreaction. This was bad. Are we closer to seeing the half-point scoring system? Because I think that would help. I, again, I don't think it would help. And, and I mean, basically, a half-point scoring system is a 20-point must because, you know, you're essentially adding more, you know, individual divisions in there. So, you know, a, uh, you know, a 20 to 19, what, you know, what is that? I mean, we're going to have the same thing. If we go to that, then, okay, how much damage, you know, what's the difference between a uh, 10, 9.5 and, and a 10, 9, right? Then you're going to have this whole... You know, whole thing. I, I think the answer to it is, you know, to make sure that you educate the judges, that the judges are aware of what the criteria that they're scoring is. I think eliminate some of these boxing judges. You know, I am a boxing fan, but I think there's a lot of boxing judges that aren't MMA fans, that don't know the submissions, that don't know the holes, that don't know really uh, the value of some of the stuff that's happening on the ground. And if that's the case, they shouldn't be judging. You know, so I, I think they have to clean that up. Uh, but I just don't see changing the scoring system because no matter what, there's always going to be a flaw with every scoring system. You know, for every plus on this side, there's a minus on that side. Um, you know, I just think it's, you know, making sure you get you train the judges better, that they, they're they very clear on what the criteria is, and that we get rid of some of these judges that don't, that don't understand MMA. So I guess my uh, next call for uh, five judges, no, because we can't even find three right now. Right. <laughs> That's not going to work. We're not going to. We're not going to do five because, yeah, I think you know some of the fights we're only agreeing with one judge. Right. So uh, no, Ed, that's not going to work. All right. So uh, Musasi Jardine two coming to an arena near you pretty soon. And, and hey, I think it'll be an interesting fight if Keith Jardine is in shape, which I know he will be when he has a full training camp ready to go. Hey, I think it's going to be a fun fight, and uh, we'll see how good uh, Musasi really is. And I'll say that is the one great thing about, there's a lot of great things about the MMA world, Uh, the fact that now UFC has these strike force fighters under contract. Uh, There should be no matchmaking issues. And when a bad decision goes down, guess what? They turn around and they they get the fight again, you know, get a better game plan, get in better shape, and finish the fight on on either side, and don't let the judges decide it. 
Yeah, I, I really like the fact that in MMA, the guys are so willing to, you know, hey, they want to fight the best guys. They want to have clear, definitive fight, you know, and that's good for the sport. And, you know, you, you have to applaud the fighters, you know, because uh, that's not always the case in boxing where, you know, fighters uh, don't always necessarily want the toughest opponent all the time. And they're looking for the guy that's going to make them the most money with the least risk, you know, and, and while that's great for their, their pocketbooks, it's not necessarily great for us as fans. And I think the sport grows if they do it the way it's being done in MMA, where you make the best fights and you make the most compelling matchups, then the, ultimately everybody's going to make more money. And I do like the way most MMA fighters handle it when they maybe they got uh, shortchanged on a decision. A lot of them, like Musasi, will stand in there and go, hey, the guy was really tough, and you kind of put it on yourself. I didn't finish the fight. Yeah, and I think that, you know, that whole attitude that they have, I think is phenomenal, the way they they do that. And, and much credit to Musasi for the way he handled it. Much credit to Keith Jardine for putting on the kind of show that he did on the short notice that he took the fight. You know, it, uh, if you looked at it and if you told me, hey, Keith Keith had trained 10 weeks for this fight, then I'd say, you know, I'm not too impressed with what Keith Jardine did. But when I know that he really only had a few days to train for the fight and to game plan in the whole nine yards, you know, very impressive what he did. All right, Kevin, nice job. Thank you, Steve.